So, in terms of what we can do to promote uh, learning um, on a lifelong basis, um, I think educational institutions in general uh, need to recognize that some of the old paradigms um, of you know, studying for three years and then being kind of done with higher education and the rest of your life you're just working, uh, those are kind of redundant uh, paradigms. And at the same time, um, I don't think it's that realistic anymore to think of people's, you know, interrupting their careers and taking three years out to go and, and, and learn a new skill. Uh, they've got to be doing both work and learning at the same time. So language learning or any other subject needs to be delivered much more on demand. It needs to be uh, effectively that you realize you need to you know, move to a new country, you need to learn a new language, or uh, I need to program in a new language in order to develop this new software product. I need to learn that very quickly. So I think that what's, what's critical in, in how we approach lifelong learning is to understand what is the also the, the, the behavioral change in, uh, in people's lives. They don't have time to, for example, um, get in the car every evening at 4.30 and drive across town to go to a language center to sit down and spend an hour with a teacher and then get in the car and drive home to their families. That kind of interruption won't work. And so we've got to be accommodating to people's lifestyles and to the reality of people's um, need for continuous professional development, but at the same time that it's, it's, it's much more um, short, intense spurts rather than you know, things being dragged out over a long period of time. I guess I'm very impressed. Um, so I'm Swedish, um, and uh, our country was kind of um, uh, one that had to go through lots of changes in its uh, labor market. So Sweden, for example, has for a long time supported uh, re-education of, of folks where maybe they've been in a certain job for a while, their skills are, are no longer relevant. Um, for the level of income that they've come to expect and they need to be re-educated. So Sweden has had a kind of state-sponsored program um, and uh, I think that that's been very, very successful. But I don't think that that's an optimal system. I think that there are better systems where, frankly, here in the United States, um, you know, within our company, uh, people continuously go off and, and do courses uh, whether that's Oracle training, uh, which is a very specific technical skill, or we've promoted someone into a new position and now they need certain management training, or there's compliance training and, and so forth. But all the time, um, uh, I find that it's much more uh, scrappy than it necessarily would have been uh, you know, 20 years ago or something like that. You're being entrepreneurial even in your learning. So you're trying to find new ways all the time to uh, to support your ambitions or the requirements uh, of your organization.